Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 News. Three teams reportedly bringing upgrades for the Dutch Grand Prix this weekend, chiefly among which Aston Martin, but also McLaren and Mercedes bringing some changes to their car as well on a weekend where George Russell believes poses possibly Mercedes' best chance this season of dethroning Red Bull outside of maybe Brazil at Interlagos later this year. Very much interested to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate the first big update of the day. Kevin Magnussen and Nico Hulkenberg will remain main as the driver partnership for Haas going into 2024. This game is a bit of a surprise to me just because Haas have announced this relatively early I thought. Haas have been historically shall we say the last few years when well Mazepin was gone, Schumacher looked great, all of a sudden Schumacher was getting beaten by Magnussen and now it's the same story with Hulkenberg and K-Mag. I thought they might say you know what Magnussen we want somebody else but I think this is a pretty good decision all things considered. Two very solidly midfield drivers, I think in K-Mag and Hulk, drivers that know they're probably not going to get a chance at a better team, and they're very solid, pretty dependable drivers. Yes, Haas could have given another driver a go, and I know that people will say, well, this is somewhat underwhelming, but, um, you know, fair play. I don't mind it from Haas, and actually giving some respect to K-Mag, I think, is nice, because they could quite easily say, you know what, K-Mag, you were good last year, but now Hulkenberg's usually beating you in quality in the race, so um, we're going to kick you out of here. wouldn't say that was necessarily fair. And as Steiner says, I think it's safe to say we've had an extremely solid driver pairing this season and ultimately there was no reason to change that going forward. So I think that's kind of nice all things considered and that's the first update of the day. This is another one. So yesterday we talked about this rumour that's been emerging that Lance Stroll might quit Formula 1 of his own accord to go and play tennis professionally, which is a bit of a strange one. And even if he doesn't do the tennis thing, the first part of that analysis may well have some merit. Now, he was spotted today at turning up to the paddock. He missed all the media duties with some sort of bandage on his jaw and like on his ear. It kind of looks like he's had something removed, some sort of bump, I don't really know, from this side of his face. Hopefully he's all okay but I know that people were saying oh he was obviously practicing with Djokovic or whatever and he got slammed at the side of the face by a tennis ball. I don't think that's necessarily true but it does come at a rather interesting time when um, you know just yesterday we discussed rumours that Stroll is going to be quitting F1 and now he's got another strange thing that probably won't affect his weekends but you guys know at the start of the season he fractured the wrist he did somehow race in Bahrain but um, it definitely wasn't optimal. You know, turn one pretty heavy right hand lock he had to basically be driving one-handed through there. It wasn't ideal. So Stroll's had a bit of a difficult season so far. And if the rumours are true, we might not have too many more seasons of Lance Stroll if he's the one that decides to quit. Now, in those media duties, there were a few things mentioned. Firstly, from Charles Leclerc saying, and I think it's really the, one of the first times that a driver has said this, referencing the mechanics and other members of the team. So he says that, look, 24 races is pretty much the limit of what we can possibly do. At some point, it gets too much, not just for the drivers. And this is the thing, the drivers don't really want more than that many races anyway, but it's really the teams. You've got to think as well, the drivers are flying out there first class or on you know, a private jet, as is most often the case, whereas a lot of the engineers or the mechanics, shall we say, you know, they're not in the they're not in the private jets. They're just flying economy and they're flying all over the place. They put in more hours than the drivers do. Those guys are there days before the drivers and days after. I mean, he talks about the mechanics, the engineers, the logistics guys as well that arrive days before and fly out days after. So, you know, just for the entire ecosystem, 24 races is an awful lot, even if for the drivers it's not so bad. So I thought that was nice of Leclerc to say, and definitely this got a lot of traction. I don't think we need to be going above 24, but I think that Domenicali might try and make that happen. Now, teams are bringing upgrades. Nothing for Ferrari, we believe, this weekend. Their plan is now that they, in their opinion, of course, have Aston Martin. Their next goal is to get Mercedes, basically. Looking at the championship, it feels like Mercedes might have P2 on lock, but Aston Martin wants to come back to being the second fastest car. They, in Canada, brought some changes that, if anything, made their car regress somewhat over the coming races, and now they are taking some big steps backwards. A new floor and some further aero changes. The floor, of course, being the big one here. So... Aston Martin at the start of the season promised a pretty major array of upgrades they would bring throughout the entire season. And that is seemingly continuing in force with this new floor. So we'll see if this works or not, but if it does, and this is a circuit where at the start of the season, you'd think Aston Martin would have been quite good. Some of the traction zones, especially Aston Martin, would have been rather good around here right at the start of the year. But obviously cars have upgraded, they've developed, and Aston Martin have somewhat lagged behind. There's also some further aero changes on the rear 
here. This is, um, I think, a new rear wing for McLaren here in Zandvoort, which is not so relevant, maybe just because they don't struggle when you need a barn door on the back of your car, as we saw in Spa. They really needed a lower downforce rear wing that they simply didn't really have a better option. They probably should have tried, and I assume they're going to have a better downforce rear wing for Monza because they're certainly going to need it. But um, this weekend, they have got a new rear wing still, and Mercedes actually have a slightly different design that I believe we saw back in Hungary. But um, Andreas Halter and the guys over at AMUS come out with their analysis on this and basically say, yeah, new floor for Aston Martin, and also some upgrades for Mercedes and McLaren. We saw that McLaren rear wing, it's not clear as it stands what the Mercedes upgrades actually are. I don't believe they went into detail on this in the article, so probably rather minor things. But um, I think every race, some teams will be tweaking something, and it comes for Aston, Mercedes, McLaren, all teams that will be attempting to try and dethrone Red Bull and Max Verstappen at his home Grand Prix. This is the big weekend for Max. This is his chance to tie Sebastian Vettel's record for nine consecutive Grand Prix victories in front of the home crowd. He's won both times he's been here the last couple of seasons so you know there is a time for the other teams to try and dethrone him on at least one weekends this would be the time to do it a couple of different front wing configurations actually here for the Aston Martin as well quite substantially different new front wing on the bottom so that's one thing to look at there's also this kind of shark fin as it's been described on the back of the car this was their previous version which kind of looked to me this is the one in the middle that um if he were you know if Alonso reversed a bit too dramatically you could skewer somebody on this Obviously, there's a rear wing in the way, but you guys know what I mean. It looks pretty dramatic. I think that was rather similar to last year's Red Bull, possibly. And this year, they've now changed back to a slightly more traditional approach, which I think mirrors the RB19 a little bit more. So definitely some inspiration being taken there. There's also some changes to the kind of back of the brake ducts, the way this whole section is designed. The previous version on the right-hand side, the new version on the left-hand side, courtesy of Albert Fabrega. So um, you know that's some of the details that Aston Martin are changing around. But frankly, a lot of the changes we believe are going to be on the floor and a floor that we can't see unless Stroll or Alonso bins it in the wall this weekend and we get to see the underside of the car. Now for Mercedes, we don't really know what's changing. There has been lots of talk that something in the rear of the car needs to change. Their front end grip is pretty competitive with the best cars on the field. It's the rear instability that you can see every qualifying lap you watch on board with these guys and even in race conditions under high fuel loads especially. It's very noticeable. So it's rear suspension. There's other parts but frankly they can't change everything there's not unlimited money as there used to be there's not unlimited upgrades and development time as there used to be so a lot of those changes they will have to wait for next year but they'll do what they can going forward and there has been also noted a couple of changes to the rear wing I think we saw this back in um, Hungary actually as well that Bryson Sullivan mentions here but these are the rear wing setups on the weekends and generally it's going to be higher downforce here around Zandvoort and the circuit and obviously a downforce setup where Mercedes have generally been quite promising last season certainly and also this season so far this is like the kind of flap or let's just say opening towards the rear quite a substantial one of that compared to what we saw on the McLaren at the rear of the Mercedes rear wing and actually uh Giuliano de Kessa comment on this and basically says like it takes out a bit of drag so they're trying to get the same effect in terms of downforce reducing a little bit of drag in the process increase the straight line speed slightly and that's quite important around here because overtaking isn't so easy so having some respectable straight line speed is the way to go but they will be running higher wings than well Hamilton did let's say back in Spa. The question is with these changes can they be particularly competitive this weekend? Last year Mercedes were really good around here. They were like the only car to have a really good stint on the hard tyres. You guys might remember the W13 for some reason that weekend. Even the Red Bull couldn't match Hamilton's pace on the hard tyre but um, the Red Bull was faster. It was um, further up the grid but there was a chance that Hamilton was going to win that race if there was no safety car towards the end. I think Verstappen probably would still one, but um, there was a chance that Hamilton could get the win there if Yuki Tsunoda didn't get sent out in his Alfa Tari that was broken. He then shuts down, the safety car comes through, Verstappen gets the free pit stop and then was going to win the Grand Prix. And obviously there was then drama because Russell pitted and left Hamilton like a bit of a sitting duck and Hamilton was not happy about that despite um, a great first 30, 40 laps, let's say, of the Grand Prix before all the drama then went down. But they were really good around there last year. And it has been one of these more like higher downfall circuits where Mercedes have generally 
done rather well in the last couple of years. Even Budapest, they were fast. Now, okay, Hamilton got pole there. The race didn't turn out in their favour, the McLarens were really good, and Verstappen won by an absolute mile. But still, I mean, as Russell says, these types of circuits, high downfall circuits, we tend to go well. Budapest, they were fast last year, pretty fast this year. Zandvoort, they were fast last year, so quite possible it'll be the same again. And he reckons it might be their best chance, really, until Brazil. There's not, okay, there's a few other circuits, the likes of Singapore and others, that do require heavier downfalls. But, um, you know, Brazil, they won last year, and they will go in there feeling they can do it again. But you've got to say that this is one of their best chances, theoretically. So a couple of upgrades, nothing we believe for Red Bull on the car this weekend. Not like it's going to matter at the end of the day. And the plan is for Hamilton to try and figure out how to have the best 10 races I've ever had in the second half of a season. Of course, we know it performance-wise. We're not going to be blitzing these races, trying to maximize performance, chasing down Perez. That's the goal. Definitely feel like I'm ready to try and prepare myself for when the car is ready to be able to challenge and beat Max. I think at the moment we could only, you know, all we can do is capitalize on mistakes, which Red Bull don't tend to make. But if they do, I'll be there, says Hamilton. So we'll see if there's a chance they can execute something like that this weekend. Again, the weather might play a part in this. Verstappen, I believe, was in the media sessions, like actually looking up on his phone what the weather was going to be. And as it stands, showers are expected on, well, Friday, Saturday, and potentially Sunday morning. So maybe a dry race, but of course the weather conditions can dramatically change. And it's roughly a third chance, as it stands, of rain during qualifying. And um, as fast as pit stops say, since May, there's not been a Grand Prix that hasn't been interrupted by rain. Or at least a race weekend, let's say, that hasn't been interrupted by rain at some point or another. So yeah, decent chance it happens again this weekend, which could always throw a bit of a spanner in the works when um, rain comes into play things can be interesting as often they are if Formula One actually lets us go racing which is one of the big talking points of the last several weekends but very much interested your thoughts in the comments below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and I'll see you next time